What's going on everybody? Giraffe Anatomy here, coming at you today with another Smite Quick God Guide. Today, we will be talking about the Baba Yaga, John Wick himself. No, <laughs> we're going to be talking about the goddess Baba Yaga in Smite. What we're going to do is just go over her abilities, go over her kit, explain how each one of them works, how they can combo together, and basically some items to build on her, how it ties into her passive. So hopefully by the end of this, you're able to take Baba Yaga into a joust arena slash conquest game and be able to use her effectively. So without further ado, we'll get into some jungle practice here. I'm going to go and choose La Baba Yaga. La Baba Yaga. Uh, and then we'll get into it. <laughs> so Baba Yaga is a mage in smite. So this means she does ranged magical damage. Um, her autos are ranged, so when you left click, her basic attack will do a range um, out from her. The forest won't bite. Uh, so as you can see, her line here shows how far her auto attacks go. Um, and then, uh, yeah, she does a lot of magical damage. She's normally played in mid lane. Uh, more often than not, um, you will see her in solo every now and then. Um, and the only reason you'll see her in solo is because of her passive. She can also build defensive items that stack pretty well. Um, she'll be able to farm and, and get ahead. And she uses things like Warlocks, um, Hide of the Urchin, like things like that very well. Because she can double stack items pretty effectively with the way that her, uh, her house and her passive work. So without further ado, let's do this. I'm going to level everything up to 20, just so we have it. And we will get into her passive, which you can already see working here with the house. Um, but we'll get into her passive real quick and explain what that does, and then we'll get into everything else. So let's talk about Baba Yaga's passive. In case you didn't notice, there's a creeping little house hanging out. It's called Creeping Cabin. Baba Yaga's cabin accumulates up to 100 essence over time. When it moves, and if the enemy god gets too close, right? So it either has to be moving, so it has to be following you around. Once you get a little too far away, it'll come and follow you most of the time. Or if an enemy's around, you see this little string going to it? That's how it's accumulating this essence. Do you see that essence there? And eventually, once the bars fill, it will stop, right? Um, items with low stack count take more energy. If Baba Yaga has no stacking item, this essence heals Baba Yaga for 0.8% max health per tick. Um, so really the biggest thing that this is used for is to stack items early on Baba Yaga because it's basically free stacks. And you can stack multiple items pretty easily on her. Um, so what are stacking items, right? Stacking items are items um, where you will start out with like a lower version of it. And then once it stacks, it makes it more and more powerful. So something like Warlock Staff. A very good item on her you permanently gain plus one health and 0 0.08 magical power per stack and receive five stacks for a god kill maximum of 75 stacks so you can stack this up to 75 times it gives you a lot more power and a lot more health um than you would normally get so i'll show you what it looks like um if you buy an item like this and you stand near the house you'll see almost immediately actually i'll get away from it first so you'll see right now it's just uh, regular, right? But once I get close to the house and I'm glowing like this and the house is glowing, and do you see that how that meter went down? It already stacked 19 times, right? With, with just like that. And if I keep moving around and the house keeps following me, it's going to keep accumulating stacks. So let's go over here. And while you're away from it, it will accumulate. And once you go back to the house, right? It's got some stacks over there. Once you go back... And within range, it will start stacking your items now. So those are all free stacks that you can get. And you can stack things like Warlock Staff pretty easily. If you just sit by your house, it'll stack as the, the time comes. And the reason it's stacking is because it's a it's near this uh, Odin here, right? Um, but yeah, so that's how her passive works. If your items are all fully stacked, you will gain uh, max health per tick, right? So eventually, uh, late game when all your items are stacked, you're going to be getting health back from your cabin and stuff like that. That'll be good. Or if you don't have a stacking item, right? If you finish Warlocks and you're getting something like Divine Ruin next, um, you'll have a second item to stack. It will just give you health if Warlock Staff has been completely um, stacked, right? And you can see as Warlock Staff is stacking, I'm getting 
more power um you'll you'll see my power uh increasing here and then um, you can also see that my health is increasing here at the bottom so that's just the passive of this your maximum health and magical power are being increased per stack right really good item um to have here gives you a lot of power really great on baba yaga she also does well with book of thought same sort of thing now they won't both stack at the same time it will just stack your first item first then it will go into the next item right um and then once you get higher on the stacks it takes less essence to per stack right as you can see at the beginning with like a full stack it was like uh 19 or something like that um it'll be even more for for a full bar once you get um the stacks up on your items right it takes less essence per stack um so yeah so that is a very good use uh the uh, cabin you can't control it it's autonomous it's running around all the time it's just something that's like <laughs> it's there right um but it is a very good uh passive and it is something that you can use to stack items quickly and as you can see the bar is full again i'm gonna go near it see how it stacked my item fully and then it started going into the book of thoth that's how you use her passive so let's talk about baba yaga's one right and we'll get into like full builds later on um, and like the order you should build it in and, and all that stuff there's some strategies to it and then if you're playing in solo lane versus mid lane um there's different ways to build but um you can get away with stacking like multiple items and, and get like really beefy with her really tanky but also really powerful with the way she operates um so let's get into her one called wild witchcraft baba yaga throws forward magic imbued with chaotic qualities the magic will travel in a path of a random shape these shapes are left corner right corner a split which is like a y and then an oval and leave behind a random magical field on the ground. It flew over for four seconds. This field can boost friendly protections, boost friendly movement speed, lower enemy movement speed, or silence enemies. It's a lot of stuff going on at once. The way you can tell is here above your house. You can tell the next shape you're about to throw out and the quality. And the quality comes with like the color as well. So this right here, this is the silence of enemies, right? Um, this X means you're going to silence somebody the next time you throw it out. So if you hold in your ability, you'll see that it's the Y, it's the split, right? So this is what you need to do to hit it. Um, so if he, he ran in here, you would do that. And then he's silenced, right? He's silenced for that short duration. Um, I think it's a silence, uh, for like a second or something like that. It actually doesn't show here, but everything else is one second. Um, so you can silence an enemy out of an ability. You also have the movement speed buff, right? So you can either do your movement speed. Um, there are your movement speeds or enemy movement speeds. This one boosts my movement speed. You see my movement speed 524. Now I'm back at 431, uh, right? So you can tell what's happening uh, based here on the left, right? I'm going to throw out a sharp left L angle, right? It's going to boost my movement speed again. Um the way the colors are and everything that's how it works um the y uh or the the freeze is uh enemy hindering enemies movement speed so i'll show you this is the oval circle see how odin is affected by it and he gets a little slowed at the end there so that's affecting the enemy movement speed so you can see here um uh it'll decrease their movement speeds it doesn't do anything to yours um same thing here with the l you'll do this if the enemy walks in this field they're slowed right so frost is slow the wind gust means you're fast um one more this is back to the silence um that we have we're going to be shooting out an l and a silence so you're going to look here silence the enemy and you're good to go right and then now the next one's a movement speed for me so that's how you can kind of keep track of what's going to happen next it seems random it is random but you can kind of tell what you have kind of in your bag of tricks um so like doing that now i'm super fast right i can chase down an enemy or something like that or if i know i have one i can maybe use it for an escape so i can throw it um if i see that an enemy is coming near me i can use my one to help try and escape so i can start by doing this and then use my three which is my movement ability to escape um so there's a lot of tips and tricks on how to use this or you can use it um same thing right if you have this this is going to slow the enemy so if they're coming near you you can either shoot it at them in turn or you can just walk along the same path if they're chasing you down this path they're going to walk into it right it's going to slow them anyway um so let's get into her too so we've gone over her one and kind of how that works 
let's get into her too, called Baba's Brew. Baba throws together random ingredients to a brew, a potion. Uh, each Eye of Newt increases the potion's damage by 75%. Each Dragon Scale adds 12.5% slow to enemies hit for 2.5 seconds. And each Wolf Tooth adds 7.5% attack speed slow and power reduction to enemies hit for 5 seconds. Baba Yaka can store a single potion in her consumable slot, refiring slash canceling the ability. She could pull it out any time to throw it. So first of all, you have the normal damage, right? Starts at 95, goes to 235. And then on top of that, you have all these modifiers depending on what she pulls out. So really quick, if you just press two, this is what it looks like. And when you press her two, it will stay like this, right? She pulls it out. You have to press two again to refire the ability. So as you can see here, those ingredient, those ingredients that you see here, right? This is what it's made of. So these are the dragon scales. This is the wolf's tooth. I know this looks like a dragon claw. This is actually the wolf's tooth. Um, these diamond looking ones are the dragon scales. And what you can do is, you know, because I got one, two, three, four, and I'm sorry, I didn't show this to you guys, but, um, you get certain ingredients depending on what level it is at the beginning at level one, you're going to have three ingredients at level two, it's going to be three. And then when you upgrade to level four, it will be, um, or when level three, it starts at four, four is four. And then when it's maxed out at five levels. Um, that's when you get all five ingredients. So you won't see this many ingredients at the very beginning. You'll only see three. They're all still random every single time. Um, but what you can do is, you know, hey, I've pulled out uh, on this one four dragon scales, right? So each dragon scale adds a 12.5% slow to enemies hit for 2.5 seconds. I know if I hit this Odin with this, it's going to slow him a lot. Look at how slow that mofo is. He's pretty freaking slow after that, right? So that's how you can tell what you have in your hands. Um, and you don't need to fire it right away, actually. So like the ability says, you can actually right click to cancel the ability. And now it goes in your consumable. And it will also show you uh, based on the color kind of what it is. So you don't have to always remember um, what the ability is. But if I ever want to bring it out, I press Z and I bring it out. And normally what it is is the most dominant ingredient is the color that it is if it was that color it means it's like too much of a mix or two ingredients are even so you basically have two dragon scales two wolf's fangs and one eye of newt right um so if you go back to here the eye of newt is a 7.5 percent uh damage okay so this is going to do 7.5 percent damage it's going to add two 12.5 percent slows and it's going to add uh seven uh seven point five percent attack speed slow and power reduction for these guys right so what I can do is I can actually put this one away, right, by right clicking, and I could pull out another brew at any time. This one has two Eye of Newts, two Dragon Scales, and this. And if I wanted to, uh, this is the one you're about to throw. If I wanted to, and I wanted to um, get rid of this one, right, I can press my two again, and I can switch between the potions. Now I know you can't tell uh, because the, the symbols are different, so I'm just going to throw this one at him. Boom it at him i'm gonna try and pull another one out that's gonna be a different color to show you guys what that looks like um but these ones that are this color they're more like uh i, I, wanna, I don't want to say neutral but they have ingredients that are mixed right you have um two ingredients that are two in here so there isn't any dominant ingredient uh so if i put this away i press my two again all right now this one i got four eye of newts this one's a banger, right? So these ones, when you have four Eye of Newt potions like this, or even a five Eye of Newt, it's going to do a ton of damage, right? 7.5% times four. That's a lot of damage, right? And now if I want to get rid of this one, right? I can put it in my slot, right? So you're pressing Z at this point to put this one away and you're switching between your potions when you press Z. And now this one, this Eye of Newt, because there's four Eye of Newts, it's red. Right, because Eye of Newt is the dominant. If there's three or more Eye of Newts, it's going to be red. It's going to be dominant. So see how this one has like a, a good mix of ingredients. It's like two of these, two of those. There isn't three of any one. It's going to be this neutral, like bluish, uh, whitish color, right? This one is red. So now you know. Oh, I have a red one uh, that I can kind of store for when I really want to use it. So you can just throw this one out. It'll do that damage. You can save your red one until you need to use it next. Now you can only store one at a time. You can have like two total at one time. Um, but let me pull a sec another one out and see what happens, right? So this one, okay, so there's three dragon scales. So when I put this one away, it's 
going to be that like bluish purplish color, right? I'm colorblind, so I'm sorry if I'm saying these colored wrongs and you're looking at it and you're staring at the screen yelling at me because it's the wrong color. I'm sorry. Uh, but to me, it looks like a bluish purplish <laughs> type color, right? So this one is indicating, hey, the dominant ingredient in this, there's at least three dragon scales in this one, right? This one, once again, hey, there's at least three, in this case, four. I have newts and then once again you can see what you have here it'll show you which one you're about to throw throw this one cool you got it let's try one more before we go on to her three let's see if we can get something that with a bunch of wolf fangs so you can see that it's like a greenish type color nope unfortunate i'll just pull out random ones maybe i could show you sometime um so yeah so i'll just keep this one in my pocket here um and let's go to her three right so let's talk about Baba Yaga's three called Blast Off. So this is her leap uh, ability, her escape, the way you can get out of combat, that kind of stuff. Baba Yaga crawls inside her mortar for protection. While inside the mortar, she gains damage mitigation, knockup protection, and begins to build up explosive magic. After one second, the magic explodes, launching Baba Yaga and her mortar in the direction she is facing. Enemies near the mortar, when it explodes, take damage. So while it's charging and she's gathering all that energy, she's getting damage mitigation, and then she kind of like pops and explodes, and then she's able to go in a direction. So I'm going to show you what this looks like right now. This is uh, the area effect you'll do the damage in, right? And then uh, what you can do is when you press her three, that's what it looks like normally without moving at all. And if somebody's caught in that radius, when she explodes out um, of the center of it, they will take that damage as you saw what happened to Odin. But best thing about this ability is while you're charging it, you can move around. So I can do this and I can still move and you get like this burst of movement speed. So it enables you to kind of like get out of some sticky situations really fast. And while you're in there, not only are you taking damage mitigation, um, but you are uh, immune to knock up and then um, you're, you're immune to knock up and you, you can leap over items too. So really quick, you're immune to knock up when doing this. So you're able to really like get out of stuff. But what happens is you see this secondary circle. That's like where you'll land. So if you do this and you do it right, you will be able to leap over uh, objects. So it's hard to chase Baba Yaga down. She's able to leap over walls, get out of like Ymir walls, Odin cages, things like that, because this ability is considered a leap. So it makes her a really safe mage, like a really safe mage to play, a really safe mage to use if you're in trouble. Oh, I'm going in here. Pop, I'm out. Like, goodbye. Um, so yeah, it, it's a really great tool for her to use. Um, when it comes to comboing these three abilities together, um, there isn't like a combo between them, I would say. It's more of like a, um, like utilizing them together, like knowing, hey, this is a silence and then pulling out my two, which by the way, this is a green potion. So I'm gonna show you. That's what the symbol looks like when you have a green one, right? Um, and then throwing this out and just doing a ton of damage with these abilities and like keeping in your back pocket the red one when you know you really wanna use it and maybe try and kill an enemy. Right, um, but just utilizing her abilities. This is a silence. I know the next one's gonna be a silence again. I'm gonna pull out this up. Oh, this is a green one, so that's a lot of green, right? Um, this is adding 7.5% uh, attack speed slow and power reduction to enemies, right? So if I want to start a fight with this one, what I can do is say, okay, I'm gonna start a fight with the green one. I'm gonna silence them. I'm gonna pull out my red one. I'll throw my red one on them. Do a ton of damage, which I missed, by the way. Uh, you don't want to do that <laughs> but that's kind of how you can use her abilities in quick succession with those um you can use your three aggressively to like get up in people's face and then kind of like pop back um but i would still try and save it just for your escapes it makes her really really safe when you do that um but yeah her, her main damaging abilities are these ones trying to hit this trying to hit that and the reason she does so well and, and she can hit so hard is because she can do things like this by stacking like a uh, book of thoth and a warlock staff like look at both of these you have 1000 mana from this uh it's passive is 10 percent of your mana is converted to magical power so now you have warlock staff with 200 mana you know a bunch of magical power a bunch of health so she just hits really 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 hard um so you basically build some stacking items you can get something like karen's coin for penetration with her right and between karen's coin and all of these items um karen's coin also stacks so you can use it uh, here, 
right? You can start stacking it with um, her house as well. And uh, so you, you'll have a lot of power, a lot of penetration, things like uh, Obsidian Shard and Rada Tutu to go well on her. And you can get something like, uh, if you want, even like a Hide of the Urchin and get some mitigations and be a little bit tankier if you need to. Uh, stuff like that, right? Uh, you can do things like Soul Gem. Um, it'll, get, it'll stack with that with her house. Um, same thing with Soul Reaver for even like more tank shredding. But a build like this is going to dumpster a lot of people. You're gonna be doing a ton of damage to people with your abilities. You're going to be able to do a ton of damage with your potions. And if you have another potion kind of in, in your back pocket, you're able to get two potions out really quickly, plus or one. Um, she's a really, uh, a really good mage and she can be played very, very safe. So now let's talk about um, her ultimate home sweet home, right? Seeing the house walk around. Well, this brings it into the action. Uh, so Baba Yaga calls down her cabin, causing it to crash onto her and launch nearby enemies away. Baba Yaga commands the cabin for up to eight seconds, using it as a protective shield to create and throw four witch fire bolts from the inside. When the thrown witch fire lands, it explodes, dealing damage to enemies in an area while leaving behind a creeping patch of fire that chases nearby enemies. Enemies caught in the creeping fire take burn damage every 0.4 seconds. So... Not only do you have landing damage, which if I'm pressing it, right, there's landing damage there. And not only do I throw these things, but these rings of fire chase the enemy around, right? That's autonomous. I'm not pressing anything. They automatically are following um, the enemy when they do that, right? Um, so you get the landing damage, um, you get the burst damage, you get the burn damage, and then obviously you have a shield, uh, a health shield as well um, that you can... Uh, that you can use to basically be like a little bit tanky it makes her a little bit safer enables her to get out of some like uh, some damage or being ganked sometimes if you're able to alt and like run away and throw fire bolts at your feet no one's going to want to chase you or try and attack you while you're in that ultimate right um so yeah so you basically have it for eight seconds um and then you're firing those witch bolts and she does a lot of damage with these witch bolts um as you th like when you get a build like this as you throw them um, and I'll also show you what it looks like when you land on somebody C491 and how it like makes them go get out of there right that's uh that's a lot and then the burst damage basically the 327s here when you if you hit somebody with the uh circle of witch fire it'll do that burst damage there right and then you get the burn damage afterward you saw those 88 88 88 those ticks um, and these parentheses are j basically just saying like it's 32 plus 65.5 based on all the items that I have here uh currently right that's what that means so that's why you see him taking 88 damage um every other second afterwards um so i'll show you once again you can basically alt on somebody it does initial damage if i hit him with the bolt one two three four right it's 327 each of those and then you get to take damage on top she shreds a ton of people with this stuff um so yeah so basically what you can do is between that and your other abilities you can alt you can use your ultimate as an aggressive alt uh what i mean by that is um go for in for the kill right you can basically use her ultimate um to finish somebody off um you can use it very well to attack people that are hiding under tower um or if somebody's sieging your tower you can preemptively get into there and start throwing all those witch fire bolts right around the phoenix or the tower where they're gonna have to attack it with they won't be able to stay there for too long. They're going to take too much damage if you do something like that. But you can also use it defensively. You know, if you're getting stepped on, you just do this. Uh, place these at your feet while you're running away, right? Like, people are going to have to go through all this stuff to follow you. Uh, they're gravitating towards the nearest enemy. But if someone's following you, they're going to have to run through all these witch bolts to get to you and they're going to take a lot of damage doing that so it's a really great defensive alt as well um that you can kind of like turn a fight into so it's a good team fight alt you throw it in the middle of your like so solo and jungle diving somebody or, or you're solo fighting you put all these witch bolts under them no one's going to want to fight that dude <laughs> they're going to die if they do anyway you can use it on yourself you can throw it at enemies feats right um and then it'll stay in the fight for a couple seconds there and do a ton of damage um so yeah Basically, when we're talking about builds, so that, that was that was all of her abilities. Um, when it comes to items, I kind of reviewed them a little bit, but we'll just review it again real quick. She's really good at double stacking, so you can do things like stack a Book of Thoth plus a Warlock staff in a game. Um, it's very good for Baba Yaga to do that. Uh, with something like this, um, you might start Sands of Time. Um, you can also start Conduit Gem with her. Either of these starters is perfectly fine. 
with conduit gem um because it has the stacks right um i know it stacks by itself basically but your um house uh doesn't stack the, uh, this so it, it basically doesn't affect something like conduit gem so you're basically getting this to uh stack and get that accumulated true damage on top of like all the other damage that you're doing um i personally like a little bit of sands of time because with a build like this you don't have cooldown in it really right it's basically all power um so when you do something like throw a two you still have a 10 second cooldown on it uh just with sands of time and then you can upgrade this to something like pendulum of the ages later on and at least you have 20 percent cooldown with like a huge like tank shredding build like this right um which actually 20 percent 20 percent and 10 percent we've overcapped on um on penetration here uh with a build like this but you can do something like um if you're going to do chiron's coin you can forego obsidian shard and instead get something that has a little bit more cooldown um, and maybe some flat pen like this, like a Spear of Desolation. So if you pair this with uh, the Pendulum of Ages, now you have a total of 30% cooldown. So you'll have 20% with um, the Sands of Time plus this, then eventually this plus this passive, right? If you're you're doing damage on this. And then even with this, you'll still have um, full 40% penetration, right? With a build like this. If you don't want to go Chiron's Coin, I recommend swapping it out um, for Obsidian Shard. Right, this is a really good item. Um, Obsidian Shard is your first ability cast gets extra magical penetration. So if you want to shred some tanks, uh, this is a really good build on her. And like I said before, she's one of the only mages that can double stack. So you're going to be getting like some crazy damage numbers like this out of her because you can stack Warlocks with um, Book of Thoth. Another thing you want to do is if you do get Book of Thoth and you're stacking this, um, you could consider getting something like a um you don't want to do obsidian shard you can do something like soul reaver because it's giving you even more mana which is more power and then it is doing some damage here right sorry every time she talks <laughs> so you can do builds like this um and then there's other optimal builds where you don't have to double stack just to double stack right baba yaga can but you don't have to um if you don't want to go book of thoth you don't have to you can uh warlock staff is still pretty good on her because of like what it gives her it makes her a little bit tanky but you can do something like the um Karen's coin and um you can do so we don't have soul reaver um we have 20 percent um plus the flat pen plus this you kind of do want a rod to hoodie on her um i wouldn't say you're still going to over cap on percentage pen because you have 20 percent here plus the 30. um so you can do a build like um you might need a divine ruin if there's a lot of healing on the other team right um so you would build divine ruin next after warlock staff uh you'd still want to do something like an obsidian shard so you're getting that pen uh and stuff like that or get the cooldown the spear of desolation right um so yeah so there's multiple ways to build her um in solo you're probably going to get something a little bit more tanky she does well with uh like a book of thoth warlock staff high the urchin breastplate um, type builds where you're building high mana so you still get power but then you're also building tankier and things like that um, so yeah so that was basically the high level overview of baba yaga um, just some simple items that you can build on her um, experiment on your own there's many other people out there that know um, builds like a lot better than i do right and then it depends on like what rank you're at too like lower level people you can get away with builds where you're like stacking one two maybe three items and stuff like that at higher levels it gets into like more meta stuff and you can look up like individualistic guides you can look up what pro players are building go to like smite guru look at what the masters players are building in their matches and stuff like that if you're starting to get up there um and kind of like follow the meta trends when you do that um so yeah so that's the basics of baba yaga i hope you guys enjoyed it if you haven't already we run a discord called the smite dojo where we teach people how to play gods we're very new player friendly We'd love to see you guys join the Smite Dojo. Um, come play with us. If you're looking to learn the game, if you're looking to learn more about the gods, how to play it, or even play game modes like Conquest, right? Um, we've had people that have been playing for years. They've never played Conquest before because it's like so foreign, right? It, it's it's so different. Uh, there's so many nuances to it, and they're uh, afraid to like maybe get into it, um, be like judged by other people or flamed or, or like have toxic people like yell at them, right? So we're a very safe place. Just 
play the game the way you want to play it, right? We're here to teach you if you want to learn. If you don't want to learn, you just want to have fun and do like meme builds and stuff. We're here for that too. Um, so basically, we're just a great community to play Smite with. We just want to make it a super non-toxic environment. Play the way you want to play. And if you want to learn more, we have resources. We have mentors that are diamond and masters level. So you know you're getting good information out of them. Um, when it comes to asking them questions about certain builds and certain play styles. And we even do like one-on-one -on -one training um, and learning sessions as well. So look forward to seeing you guys in there. Um, and then subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more videos because I will be putting out a quick god guide for every single god in Smite. Um, just started on the bees with Baba Yaga. Eventually we'll get to the Z's. Until next time, guys. Thank you very much. Have a great day.